All right, so I'm going to bring Coach Nix up here in a little bit, and just so you guys understand what we did was, you know, 24 hours ago, um, he became the head coach, you know, for a 24-hour period. And that was done not as a PR thing. Um, that was really done to give him an opportunity to see what it's like to learn. Because you can't tell you have experience, like I say, with the quarterback. Like, you can't tell he has experience going in there, all right? It's the only way to get experience. So, and it really, you know, came out. I remember my dad telling me a long time ago, you know, be very grateful for what you have because this is really not a good, this has not been a good profession at all for minorities. And he used to say all the time, he's like, I'm just telling you, there's more Tony Dungy's, there's more Bubby Smith's, there's more Mike Tomlin's. That never get the that never get the opportunity, um, you know. And then it hit me when I was discussing this, you know, that <clears throat> you look around and here's the SEC, here's a couple schools coming in from Big 12, and you know we're in 2023, and between SEC and Big 12, we have no minority head coaches. So that that's really unfortunate. Um, not that I'm going to be able to change that, but <clears throat> to give someone an opportunity that. <clears throat> To speak in front of the team, to handle media, to handle pregame meal, to handle injury reports, to go out there today to manage the the kind of scrimmage, which is like a mock game that way, um, I think was really good for him. And again, you can't see how good somebody is until they get a chance to do it. Um, so, you know, that would be my wish out there to ADs, presidents, and, and universities, you know, to understand that. And this is a good example. Coach Nix has been here. We've been fortunate to keep him here. He's had a lot of opportunities to leave. Enjoyed working with him. He's done a great job. And then today, you saw a whole other level out of him of his intensity in meetings last night, pregame meal with the players, handling depth charts, doing everything. I was inspired by listening to him this morning um, talk to the team. So it was really cool to step back, be able to see that. And, um, you know, I just hope coaches like Coach Nix in this profession. Black coaches that you know don't get opportunities start getting opportunities because it is ridiculous. Um, when we're talking about two major conferences right here in this area, and when whatever it is, 80% of our players are minorities, but we got all white coaches. Really, a system that that needs to be fixed. So, Coach Nix. Guys? Coach, uh, look like a, kind of a defensive day to day um, overall. Yeah, before I get started, let me, uh, let me say this. Uh, I want to thank Coach Kippen again for the opportunity to, to go out there and, uh, and be the head coach today. Uh, it started yesterday from organizing the, the staff meetings, uh, having a chance to talk to the team in the pregame meal, uh, go out there today and kind of help lead the coordinators uh, as we went through the scrimmage. Um, so very indebted and grateful for that. That didn't happen every day. Uh, as far as what you said earlier about the defense, uh, I thought they did. I thought, first of all, they came out with a lot of energy and a lot of juice. Uh, created, I think, about three turnovers a day. Um, seen some guys up front, like Cedric Johnson, go back there and close the pocket a few times. And for our first scrimmage, I thought it was pretty good. What have the last 24 hours been like for you? Well, I'm going to tell you, um, at 3 o'clock in the morning, I had to remind myself now, hey, this is just a scrimmage now. You know, I couldn't sleep. And um, actually, when Coach Kiffin gave me the, the news probably earlier that day, the initial thought was uh, was pumped up, you know, excited. Got in the staff meeting room and had what I wanted to say, but voice crackling because uh, probably because these are my peers. Um, but got a chance to regroup with the coordinators and, hey, let's put together a plan of what we want to do. Got a chance to sleep over it, got up this morning, went back through it again, and, uh, you know, felt like, you know, being at home. Obviously, I got a lot to learn, uh, but, but an awesome opportunity. Uh, let's jam. Got a lot of touches, it seems. I know he's been here a short, short period of time, but what's been the early impression of him since he's gotten here and able to kind of get in the mix? Yeah, uh, the whole running back group as a whole. I think the whole running back group as a whole, have been, they've been very dynamic so far during camp. I mean, 
they've been really the catalyst on offense. I mean, finishing runs, giving great effort. Uh, talking about jam as he's gotten in here. I mean, you know, for a guy to just transfer it in, he's in shape, uh, understand concepts really well. Uh, you notice um, automatically the quickness of his feet, and he can get to top speed and accelerate in a hurry. Kind of building off that first question that was asked, you know, you being here on the staff for, you know, a decade now, being underneath multiple head coaches and all that, what has Ole Miss meant to you in your time here? I had to remind myself that I didn't graduate here. Sometimes I feel that way. I was like, man, did I grow up here? And every now and then Coach Kiffin remind me, hey, you're a Mississippian. I said, no, Coach, you know, I, I grew up in Alabama, but all my adult life has been here in Oxford or, or either Hattiesburg. And, I mean, Ole Miss is uh, basically the fabric of my family too. Um, my daughter, all she knows is, is red and blue. My, uh, my wife, uh, you know, we've gotten a, um, a solid foundation with Ole Miss and outside of it in this community. And it's been nothing but a plus for me. Uh, I got to thank God that he put me in a position to, to be around all these great head coaches, uh, to learn from them, coordinators as well, and try to take a little bit from each and, uh, you know, and try to instill some of my values, some of my principles as I coach my guys. So I got to say Ole Miss has been awesome to me. Coach, this is going to be a hard question, but do you feel like sometimes it's an uphill battle for a minority to become a head coach, and how do you overcome it? Uh, you know, I got to speak for myself. I think I've had a, a lot of great opportunities to do what I do, and I'm very thankful for it. Um, only way you overcome it, you got to have like guys like Lane Kiffin to give that guys opportunities. Um, you know, it's not a – true preseason game, but this is the closest thing we can do. And you see it happening in the NFL right now and guys getting opportunities to kind of showcase just other skill set, other assets that they bring to the table. And I think as time go on, I think the door will continue to open up wider and wider. And what I've kind of told myself, you know, I would love to be able to get to the highest level and be able to do that, but it's not a deal breaker. You know, control the controllables, you know, the task you're, you're given, do it to the best of your ability. And, you know, let the other things fall in place. Your uh, specialty, obviously, is wide receiver. Go over how the wide receivers have done in this first week and where you see them in the progression. I've been very pleased with them overall, um, uh, especially uh, with some of the new guys that have transferred in, mixing with some of the guys that have come back. Uh, I think these guys have shown me that their willingness to work over the summer and doing a lot of things on their own, first of all whether it be catching jugs, coming back and get extra film work. Uh, going into practice right now, these guys, in my opinion, you know, they've got, a, they've got a good start, but I'm very pleased with what I'm seeing so far. That's what I'll say for now. Coach, what, what did you learn today and in, you know, the time leading up to today? What did, uh, that, what did you learn? The biggest thing to be a clear communicator. Uh, that is what I felt out there and in between that scrimmage. Uh, making sure that you go back through the plan with a fine tooth comb, uh, making sure that all the coaches are on the same page. And um, I had to learn not to just be a wide receiver coach, look at the other side of the ball, uh, look at the other positions. And, uh, you know, you got to kind of be there for everybody. Thank you.